Last time on 3D Explained, we went over the 3D printing basics. Today, let's talk about the most common 3D printing technology, fuse deposition modeling, which is also called fuse filament fabrication. FDM was invented and patented in 1989 by Scott Crump, founder of Stratasys. Being a trademark, the FDM acronym couldn't be used by others than Stratasys. So, when launching the RepRap movement, the team led by Adrian Bowie created FFF, thus emphasizing the use of filament. In most cases, FDM is used to print a thermoplastic, which is inserted in the printer as a filament. It is driven by a motor called an extruder to the hotend, which is, well, the hotend, so the part where the material reaches the melting temperature thanks to a resistor and melts to then be extruded through a fine nozzle. The filaments can also be replaced by pellets, which are kind of little pieces of plastic which get extruded thanks to a hopper. In both cases, as soon as the material is extruded, the molten plastic is laid down on the print bed, layer after layer, and cooled hard. With FDM 3D printing, quality is often affected by two factors, nozzle diameter and layer height. The larger the nozzle diameter, the higher each layer can be. But if the layers are too big, the print can lose details and show defects called steps. The most common nozzle size today is 0.4 mm, and with this kind of nozzle you can easily go from 0.1 to 0.3 mm layer height. With FFF 3D printing, the material can be brought to the hotend thanks to two different methods. The first one is barton extruding, where the material is guided from the extruder to the hotend thanks to a barton tube. This setup is very lightweight. With direct drive setup, the extruder sits on top of the hotend, so that the material can directly transit down to the nozzle. This type of setup is best for precise extrusions and flexible material. Even though FDM typically uses plastic filament, it is also possible to print different materials, like composites made of metal and ceramics. You can even print with beer or coffee waste filled plastics. Even though FFF always works the same general way, printers can have very different attributes to ease the printing process, make bigger parts, or allow for the use of more demanding materials. This variety makes the FTM 3D printer market very broad, with a large offering of machines, ranging from desktop entry-level machines with a cost as low as a few hundred bucks to factory-sized engineering printers that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thanks to all these different FTM 3D printers, we're able to manufacture all kinds of products, going from small prototypes or decorations to rockets or even buildings. I hope you now have a better understanding of how FDM works. Thanks for watching this episode of 3D Explained. See you soon.